tribe, welcome to the HGDC, HG Designs Crochet channel. I'm Heather, your host. I'm 28 and I live in the United Kingdom. This channel is all about crochet, knitting and a general yarny life. I class myself as a maker and I am beginning my journey as a crochet and knitwear designer and I'm taking you all along with me. So if you are a new viewer, hello, hi and welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you, welcome back. I love spending this time with you. Now, today is one of my usual vlogs in that it's an update on my projects. Um, I don't have any finished objects, but I do have plenty of news for you. I've got an almost finished project and I've got a work in progress. So. Let's get into the news, uh, which won't take too long. If you want to skip straight to the crochet, I will timestamp down below for you so you can skip on ahead. News, okay. So in my last vlog, I said to you all, well, I showed you my summer's dusk shrug, which is down here. Um, I showed you that it was finished and that I was hoping to get it tested. So this is my summer's dust shrug, shrug. Um, the fringing has got beads on it. I used Stylecraft Aran in the colourway. Is it Wild Rose? Um, and it's just a simple shrug cardi. It's got shell stitch all the way around, all the way around the arms, and it basically looks beautiful and I'm so impressed with it. You all sent me some absolutely lovely comments about it as well. Um, let me show you. Now as I said, this cardigan was inspired by the Boho Fringe Cardi by Made By Hem on Instagram. And as I said last time, I messaged her and just said that I was so inspired by the cardigan that I had made this shrug and that I wanted to release it for testing um, and that I just wanted to check that she was okay with it because I didn't want to step on anybody's toes and I didn't want to cause any problems within the community. Um, and I'm glad I did that because she let me know that she didn't feel comfortable with it and I completely respect that and I just said that it's fine. So what I've said is that I'm not going to release this pattern, um, which means unfortunately you won't be able to make your version of one of these. However, I do have a different shrug in mind with a different stitch that I can work on. And I do have another pattern completely of my own, of my own inspiration for you all. So although this is disappointing, I've put something else in place for you. Um, I do feel disappointed because I did put quite a bit of time into this, a lot of thought. Um, I felt that I'd made it sufficiently different, but you know what, at the end of the day, it's just not worth the effort because I don't want to cause a bad name for myself or I don't want to upset anybody when I can put all of that time and energy into one of my own designs that's down there and all of the other designs that are in my head. So, unfortunately, I won't be releasing this pattern, but I want to say thank you to everyone that has been so amazing. The comments have been so lovely and I felt really, really supported by you all. Um, and as I said, I wanted to push forward with another design so that I did have something to give to you all. So are you ready to see that? Now when I, when I got the message from you, the designer, and she said she wasn't comfortable, I knew the right thing to do was to say, I won't release it. But I was really disappointed. And whenever I feel a bit down or I just need a comfortable project, I always reach out for granny squares. Now, I have, I adore the granny square and I have so many granny square blankets because I just make stack after stack after stack of granny squares. Now I know and I can see them off camera that I've shown you the huge, huge 
pile of granny squares that I've got that were part of a blanket that I took apart. Do you want to see them again? So in this huge bag for life with Finding Dory on it, can you see how big it is? That is full, full of granny squares. They're all three round granny squares that I made into a blanket <laughs> and then took apart because I wasn't happy with it in general. Those granny squares are being made into pro other projects, rest assured. But as I was saying, I found the granny squares so therapeutic and I think it was maybe last Sunday that I that um, I decided I wasn't going to release the summer dusk shrug. And I felt a little bit down about that, so I started making a granny square. I have stacks and stacks of granny squares in this middle tub with all the pinks and reds. At the top there, what looks like schmooshed yarn, is actually a huge stack of granny squares, which I started for my Just Because blanket, which are still in there. Um, and I have that bag of granny squares, and then I have a few more hidden away, which I'm not even going to show you or tell you about. So as I was making this granny square, I did think to myself, I don't need any more granny squares. Definitely not for blankets. So then I just had this pop in my head. Well, I'll just make it something that you can wear then. And then that way, then you can give everybody a pattern and you've not let them down. So my favourite, favourite granny square blanket, bar my granddad's blanket. If you go back to my blanket stack vlog, which I will link for you, I've shown you all of the blankets I've made. I made one for my granddad, but the colour scheme isn't my cup of tea. That's my favourite for sentimental reasons. My favourite for aesthetics is this one behind me. So this is my granny square giant granny square blanket um it's never been finished but i started this back in 20 i want to say i started it early 2011 and then i picked it back up in 2013 14 when i started to get back into crochet it's absolutely huge i designed it for a king size bed. These colours are like my go-to colours, the navy that joins it all and then just all of the pinks and the purples and it's so warm. Oh. So that was my inspiration, that is a blanket that I made for myself years and years ago and it is, it sits in my lounge and it's the one that goes either on the sofa or on my bed in the winter. And it's come back into the lounge in the last few evenings because it has got so cold in it, in Britain. Like, I say so cold, it's dropped down to 14 degrees. I can't cope with it, bring back the heat that I was moaning about. Anyway, so that was my inspiration. And I, I was making a giant granny square. And I decided that was gonna be the back piece. And I just thought, right, I'm gonna rock this. I'm gonna make wearable granny garments. <laughs> you ready to see it? Ta-da! This is my crazy granny top. I absolutely love it. It is a prototype at the moment. It's work in progress. I started it last Sunday, like I said, and today is Saturday. I actually finished, finished this last night. Um, I know what amends I want to make to it, I'm going to alter it, but I wanted to leave it whole so that I could show you it. So on the back, I've got this huge granny square. Absolutely huge. And then on the, for the front pieces, I did granny rectangles, and there's two of them. And then the sleeves is granny stripe, um, with a bit of double crochet there to make a bit of a cuff. I don't have a name nailed down yet, so as always, any suggestions? I've been playing with Granny Magic, Granny Slouch. Because of the colourway, I've gone with like 
Indian nights. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not quite there yet. Then in terms of alterations, I feel that I've made these too big. So I could either put a button there, but I just, I don't No. What I want to do is take back the squares so that it sits properly on me. Sit, take back the rectangles rather so it sits like that. And also, I'm gonna make this front panel completely navy because it's just too bright. For, it's too bright for me. I like the detailing in the back of the project as well. Um, a lot of my designs that you'll see coming forward, they've got styling and detailing on the back, a bit like the fringing and the tassels on the summer dust shrug. I like it all in the back. Um, so I want, for me, I want to make this all navy. My only reserves about doing that is I will need to buy some more yarn and I've put myself on a yarn ban until I go to the yarn festivals. I'm going to a couple coming up in the year. We'll talk about that after. Um, so I didn't want to buy any more yarn. So unless anybody out there has got some paint box yarn in midnight blue, DK weight, two balls of it that they want to swap with me or something, unless Starcraft uh, paint box wants to send it to me, I highly doubt that, especially as I just blooped their name and I might be able to sneak it into a wool order because my other half wants a male version of this and he's got a quirky elbow design but anyway I'm rushing ahead unless I can get hold of some more yarn I don't have enough navy to make the front panels solid and I also feel like four pictures I should leave that multicolored for you all to see because I'm sure there's lots of people that would like to make it multicolored. Um, but my instinct is saying I'm going to make these solid. I'm going to find a way to get enough navy yarn to make this solid navy. That way, the sleeves and this back square are going to pop and it's going to look amazing. Um, I'm going to leave the sleeves like this with the little bit here, that bit, and I put that bit in because I didn't have enough navy, but even now with going to, if I do potentially purchase more, naughty, you're on a yarn band, um, I will leave that because I think it's a really nice feature, but just imagine that blocked out navy, all of this is really going to pop, and I love, love, love that, that's great. So the inspiration came from that, as you can see, I'm pretty closely matching. The only difference with this is that it's got a lot of glitter, glitter yarn in it, whereas my blanket doesn't. So I've got glitter lilac, glitter pink, like a midnight navy glitter. A glitter purple, a glitter aubergine, um, and it just sparkles. I really love it, and I'm quite chilly, so I'm going to put it back on. Um, so yes, after I've finished recording, I'm going to take it apart for the third time. <laughs> the first time, I put it together. Why did I take it apart? I think it'd be fair to say that out of the entire thing, the sleeves and the sewing it together have taken the longest amount of time. Um, so for example, yesterday, I sat and watched the entirety of Jungle Book, the latest one, the 2016 one. Um, that was whilst I was sewing in part of the end and one sleeve so that the couple of hours and I still had so much to do I did sew in part of the ends as I went along so let's give you the proper story because this is all over the place as I made the back square I made it um so the size I thought I wanted 
which was to, can you see that navy line there? That was originally going to be the border for, this, for the back piece. So quite a bit smaller than what it actually is. It would have been there as opposed to all the way out here. I did sew in all of those ends. Then I added on one, two, three, four, five, six more rounds. I didn't sew those ends in. So I had those six ends, which would have given me 12 ends. Then again, on the front, I think I added four or five rounds as well. Um, and I didn't sew those ends in on either of the front panels. And then when it came to the sleeve, I didn't sew in any of the ends at all. Um, I originally made the sleeves quite long. So the first time that I put it together, the sleeve was entirely too long, the wrong shape. So I redid the entire sleeve, um, which I didn't take any footage of. This was this was just off the hook within... It, it came together so quickly that there wasn't even a pause and a take footage moment. I just... It, it just... It just was, basically. Um, then, the next time I took it apart, I... I put a sleeve on the wrong way around, so my seam was the wrong way around. Um, and I felt like I hadn't lined up the sleeves properly. I'd just kind of jumped in and sewed it rather than counting and making sure it was all centred. So I um, took it apart again, put it together yesterday for the third time. And I'm really, really happy with it. It kind of looks like a bomber jacket as well, I feel like. Um, so as I said, I'm just going to change that front panel to a complete solid um, navy. Though it might mean buying more yarn. I'm sure I can find a way around it. And then I'm going to release this pattern for testing. And I'm going to release this pattern to all of you lot. So I feel immensely proud because this is the first garment that I'll be doing all by myself. All my own inspiration, all my own making, all my own hard work. Um, as I said, the sleeves took a fair bit of frogging to get them the way I wanted them. Um, I like my cuffs to sit over my palm so they are a little bit longer than what maybe that you might prefer I don't know um but that's where I like mine to sit I did this band of double crochet here just to give it that snugger fit and then I went out into the granny stripe um and I found this so therapeutic because I was making granny squares and a granny rectangle which I learned to do this by the way um but then I did find with the design process that it was slightly stressful in that I got about two thirds of the way through and then I had this sort of like panic thinking, what if it looks rubbish? What if this looks actually awful? And I definitely was a little bit mardy about it as well, but I persevered and it's come out really, really good. So that's gonna go navy next time you see it hopefully it'll be done and these will be a bit smaller just so that they meet like so um i don't know whether to put any buttons or fastenings down it if i'm going to put any sort of fastening i want a zip and eh, i don't know i'll think about it i might just leave it so that they meet sort of like it will be like that, but the right size for me. All in navy. Then my other half has had an amazing idea. He wants a version of this, um, but he wants, rather than this busy bit here, he said he'd like this bit, but then he wants an elbow patch instead in the other colours. And he's gonna go for more muted colours that he can wear every day. I think, I didn't think I would wear this every day, but actually make this solid navy and I'm totally just going to rock this. Like, I will put this on just to chill in. I'll put this on to nip out to the shop. If I leave the fronts like this, and this is going to be something that I would wear to a yarn festival or if I was with yarny folk, but I'm not sure that I'd wear it day to day because it's just a bit too busy for me. 
So, name suggestions. I wanted it to be, I was thinking Granny Slouch, but it is not the slouchy design that I was kind of originally had in mind. Well, that's not fair to say. It's not as slouch, it, slouch just doesn't fit because it isn't the slobby type top that would go with that. Um, I do want it to be, I want it to have Granny in there somewhere. And again, I've got that whole nature thing going on. So if anybody's got any ideas, I'm definitely gonna have to ring my grandma and hash this out with her again. Um, but yeah, what do you think? I love it, I actually love it. Really, really pleased with it. And it matches my blanket. Um, yeah, I can definitely see me making matching accessories as well, like, yeah this is gonna this is just gonna snowball i was gonna say i was gonna make this using my hddc scrap ball challenge so that's where i magic knot all of my scraps together and then make um a pattern or a project i think that you could totally make the back square out of your scraps and then just have a little bit for hit I, that's gonna look amazing i might do that and do the body in gray and use my scraps for the because you could showcase so many colors it just depends whether you're a bit fussy whether you want each round to be a different color or if you're happy for it to blend um, I guess another way around using the scrap ball would be to make it granny stripe on the back look at all these ideas that are just coming out I might have to work on that so for my other half's cardigan, RT, R T, um, he would like khaki, like a khaki green, and then he's thinking of dark grey and a lighter grey. It sounds good, but I just feel like there is a colour missing. Like there should be I don't know whether there should be a brown like a light brown, like an earthy colour. But he definitely wants the rounds on the blanket, on, on the blanket, on the square on the back to be different colours, which is great because it will showcase it, but there's more ends, guys. That's a lot of ends. Um, definitely do them as you go along. So, yeah. Name suggestions and... Um, it's going to need testing. Um, I know a few of you wanted to test my granny uh my summer dust shrug this is a slightly different style but hopefully i will get some testers come forward and next time you see this on me i should have it finished i'm looking okay i should take it off because it's so bright but i'm cold i've got one more work in progress which i guess this is but i'm putting it in almost finished um work in progress is oh dear have I dropped stitch no is this which I've left halfway through around this is slightly messy yarn what have I done okay this is my progress on a jumper that I cast on and maybe a weekend ago it is just using some yarn that I found in a sale that didn't have a ball band and the pattern is going to be this this is the yarn it's like a hessian colour now I'm having some doubts on this um, Let's see if we can untangle to start with. So my doubts are, this is just a generic acrylic yarn that was on sale and it was cheap and I've got sweater quantity of it. And so I thought I'll make a jumper. And as I said last week, I got that pattern in a charity shop for 10 pence. So I just cast it on. Um, my doubts are, number one, it is really scratchy 
and even with a good block and some fabric softener I'm not sure that it's going to feel that nice and it is quite a, a close fitted jumper my other worry is is it's already really bobbled and fuzzy I don't know if you can see any of it and that's before I've even finished it let alone worn it so I do I do feel that do I frog it and just pick some yarn that I'm happier with or do I carry on because it's a lot of work to get through and then think I don't want to wear it because I don't like the yarn um, and as I said I'm on a yarn band so I don't want to buy more yarn so I've got to use something in my stash that would be sweater quantity or hold out till I go to a yarn festival and I'm going to Yarndale in September and hopefully the Nottingham Expo which is usually November um, so what do I do? I kind of think if I've got doubts at this stage it's really early on to have doubts really early I was thinking of maybe when I bought this yarn I bought like a really light khaki colour from a shop and it's a lot softer to touch and I was thinking maybe I should I might swatch in that and see what that comes out like um, I don't know any suggestions <sighs> because I just I think the colour will look good against me. My problem is, is I don't want to use expensive yarn because I feel I'm not experienced enough and I don't want to waste it or ruin it. And I don't want to use rubbish yarn because then I just don't think I'll ever wear it. Maybe, maybe there's a mid-range yarn that I could go with that will help me out. Or maybe I should just stop moaning and just crack on. Um, but I have paused on this a little bit because I've been unsure on the yarn. And then because from Sunday, my sole focus has been this cardigan that I'm wearing, which I'm loving. I think once the front panels are navy, then I'll really happily sit in this Um it's really quite warm as well. It's not like a mid-winter cardigan, but it's definitely late summer evenings into sort of autumn weather. All right, I'm just gonna finish this row because I really annoy myself when I leave it part way through. And then we're gonna move on to the next subject, which is news. So we've just got a few, I took this project with me the other day when we um, nipped out and got food and I sat and knitted whilst I waited for food to arrive and it's quite funny because seeing people's double takes and reactions is still quite amusing and when I'm actually knitting and not purling I can look round but when I'm purling I find it that I need to be looking at what I'm doing. But anyway, knitting in restaurants is a new level for me. Almost dropped it. Now that that's, so you can see it better now. As well, is the ribbing supposed to be that much smaller? Oh, it's not too bad. There we go. I do really like the colour, I think that's going to look good. I'm just unsure on the yarn quality. But as my grandma said, I can always wear a vest under it, a long sleeve, um, what are they called, long johns or something. 
So that's my work in progress. That I've dubbed my 10p jumper because the pattern cost me 10 pence. I am, I think I need something like 38 centimetres before I can start the mesh pattern for the back piece. I think I've just hit about 28 maybe. A little way to go. But anyway, next up. A little bit more news for you is that I set up my Patreon. Um, I decided to do it the other night and I stayed up a little bit late and just got it done, launched it and then I put the link on Twitter and I screenshotted it in my stories and I already have two Patreons which is amazing so thank you so much, I have messaged you both, thank you. It was a little bit like when I pressed launch I was like this is stupid, no one's going to want to do this, why am I doing this? Launch. And then to get the notifications. I, I did some serious happy dancing, um, yeah, I set up my Patreon, um, Patreon is a website where patrons can support creators and makers, um, and by supporting them then the creator or the maker can carry on with their creative endeavours and making whatever it is they make with that financial support, so they've got the security to do that. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while and I just decided to just go for it with a lot of other things like my patterns, just go for it. Now it all works in together, um, I wanted a platform to be able to connect to my tribe, like we have an amazing community and I feel like a group board is really missing where we can just post, we can comment for each other. Um, so what I want to do with Patreon is there's going to be, there's a place where I can post to you all. So that will kind of take place, the, the place of my blog that I decided to get rid of. So I can post sneak peeks and pictures and things like that on there for you all. Um, also, to make it more of a community, anybody else that signs up to Patreon, anyone that signs up, should I say, to Patreon, can then become, become part of my closed group, Facebook group. So that's going to be private, but once you have signed up to Patreon, if you screenshot that you signed up, once I've signed up the, um, once I've created the group, then you can ask to be invited and then you can join there. So we can post all about um, HGDC, any of the projects that you make for HGDC, anything that inspires you. It's just a place that we can really interact because that is missing at the moment and I really, really want that space. Um, Patreon's also going to be a place that I can get my patterns to you. Um, it's going to be where I'm going to post all of my free patterns at the start. So what I want to be able to do is when I have a free pattern, it's going to go on to Patreon and then you get that for 30 days before it goes anywhere else, before I put it on Ravelry, Etsy or Love Knitting or anywhere else, it's going up there. Um, I wanted a way to be able to do that with my blog, but I couldn't really think or find a way where I could give you that exclusivity. Whereas with Patreon, I can, because you're supporting me, so I want to make sure that you're getting the access to all of my stuff before anyone else. Um, so you'll have 30 day access to my projects as well. Um, I'm also going to put discount codes for patterns, so any paid for patterns. I'm going to make sure that um, my patrons get discount codes so that they can go on to wherever I decide to post them, Etsy, Love Knitting and um, Ravelry and then you're going to have a discount code so that you can download that at a reduced rate because you're my patrons and you're supporting me monthly. Um, I want to make things a lot more accessible and a lot more affordable and it's just a nice pack to have isn't it? Um, so yes, discount codes. What else is going to be on there? I'm also going to be, you'll get a lot more sneak peeks, you'll get a lot more behind the scenes um, because I want to make it so that you get to see more of what I do. Instagram is very curated and I only post in a certain sequence and you don't always get to see a lot. And I don't use my stories a whole lot either. Um, so that's what I would like to do with Patreon. There's a story facility on there 
and also I can then put the posts up for you to see. So you can see more insights into my um, journal, which is just there and has got all of the design stuff for this in there. I can put more sneak peeks of that in for you so that you can see it. And I know that that information is safe with you guys as well because you're not trying to copy or imitate or just do me over. I want it to be a nice, supportive, encouraging environment. I'm also gonna make sure that Patreons have access to my email address. So again, um, if they want, if if you want to contact me or speak about something, then that option is there. So yeah, there's going to be loads and loads of great perks about it um, and I have launched that and I'm going to put the link below for you all so if you want to go have a look. I decided that I only want one tier so you can put multiple tiers and people usually put like bronze, silver, gold but I've just decided I just want the one tier. I, I want everybody to be included. I don't want anyone to feel more important than anyone else everybody in my tribe is important and any support is important so i've just set it at a minimum level of three dollars which i think works out at like two pounds something if you're in the uk um then you then you um well then i will lose some of that money to tax so for every three dollar pledge i actually get two dollars 49 um, and then that $2.49 will be going back into HGDC. That money is going to mean that I can get more patterns out to you because I'll have money for the yarn that I can't afford. Oh dear. Um, it will mean that I can get more people on board in terms of testing, in terms of photography, just in terms of product management. I will be able to get that support that I need to get the best patterns available to give to you and also it will mean that I can invest in equipment it means I can invest in lighting um, for the podcast because I'm aware we're coming towards winter and daylight I mean it's quite a nice day today but I feel like it could be brighter in here anyway so equipment set up um, it also means that I can invest more of my time into creating content so it means I can take you to more yarn shops, I can take you to more yarn festivals, I can take you along with me to vlogger events. It means that I'll be able to afford the travel and be able to put my time into it because it's supporting itself and eventually support me along the way so that I can do this more as a full time, full term thing. I can actually I can actually have my passion as a job which would be amazing. Now obviously Patreon isn't going to do all of that overnight and I don't expect it to but I would like it to support HGDC so that if I feel that more lighting is needed so I can get better um, content to you and on a more regular schedule because I only record on a weekend morning purely because I need the decent light whereas if I've got the light I can record whenever but anyway HGDC is my baby and by having you help me support it and helping it grow I can put more back out and that's amazing so I will be able to turn around more of these patterns that I've got locked up in my head and I'll be able to get more of them out to you just like this one now I did say I was going to launch that with a summer dust shrug as the first pattern available. I've now slightly tweaked that, obviously that shrug isn't going to be released. This is going to be the first pattern that I release solely under my own name and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on Ravelry, Etsy, Love Knitting, all three, one of them, I'm not sure but that's my thinking at the moment and then I'm going to provide a discount code to all my patrons. Um, because I think this might retail something like, say it's $6 or £6. You've already paid $3, so I don't want you paying that again. So there'll definitely be discount codes so that you get it at a cheaper rate than others anyway. So this is going to be the first pattern on there. But if you feel you can't support me on Patreon, don't. there's no pressure. I'm not here begging for money because that just doesn't feel right. Um, you can also support me in so many ways, such as sharing um, 
you know, sharing, just sharing, <laughs> sharing the links, um, posting your stories that I'm on Patreon, posting your stories about projects or patterns that I'm working on. When it comes up to the pattern release, if you can post that you are interested in it or that you want it so that other people can see and other people can come and get it. Um, if you can sign up to Patreon, that's a great way to help me. And also just like getting this channel out there. So if you can like this video, if you can subscribe, if you have any Yarny friends or if you're in any Yarny groups, let them know because the more people that find it and the more people that see this, the more I can create and that's just an amazing feeling. So yeah boy, this is, the more I look at this, I, I just don't want to take it off. I'm definitely going to make that neutral because it's a little bit busy because in effect this bit would be navy. Oh, it just looks great. <laughs> anyway, got to stop just admiring myself. Um, next week I will be showing you hopefully this completed. Um, I'm starting a pattern that I got out of a book for a granny stripe jumper. Um, it should be more progress on my knitting and then maybe a couple of free projects that I've got in mind that I want to create and also that I want to then be able to put on Patreon. So, thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you could subscribe, if you've not already subscribed, if you can share this, podcast anywhere on your Instagram stories just so that people know that I'm here and I'm doing this and that this tribe is growing because we're over 400 strong by the way yes 400 strong <laughs> um, if you can share this then that would be absolute amazing help just to get more people aware of us and this little tribe that we've got going on so I'm going to wrap up now and I will see you next week with more yarny goodness. Happy making!